<coughs> Alright then. Three, two, one. How are you, kind folks? Duty how folks kind. Slam and skits back together again. again. Hey! Oh, we're back again! No, baby. Today we're talking about a band. A band that Skits knows and loves. Great band. One of the greatest. Oh, yes. So a band great. that apparently is gone? Is it gone? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it yeah, is. It, it, it's, dis it's discontinued? Yeah, unfortunately. The, the okay. Well, we'll get into that. Indeed. So, Led Zeppelin, a.k.a. <laughs> for some reason, they decided to name their band after a outdated form of transportation that ended in tragedy. <laughs> yep. Uh, okay, whatever. But, hey, that's just how the rock, that's just how rock bands work, I guess. <laughs> that could be, could be. To be fair, though, they are a fairly decent band. Yes. ACDC-like, I would imagine. Uh, I listen to them sometimes. I listen to them sometimes, not all the time. If you give me a list of their songs, I probably will remember certain ones, but yeah. I'm not as in tune with the band quite like a... What is it? <gasps> Thunderstruck? Is it ACDC? Yeah. Yeah, ACDC, I guess. ACDC I know more about, but not Led Zeppelin, but I do know some. Yes. Skits, you know a lot more than yes, I do. Yes, I suppose so, yeah. So, why don't you just give us a rundown of lead? Yeah, sure. Uh, just give, so, us, give us a little summary here. What, who is Led Zeppelin? What? Who makes up Led Zeppelin? Well, Led Zeppelin was founded in the late 1960s. I believe it was 68. And they are a very well-known uh, classic hard rock group. Uh, some of it is soft rock, more ballad-like. I don't always get into that stuff as much, but uh, they're very popular in the 70s. Uh, they were kind of... Naturally, because they were... Most yeah. of their albums came out in the 70s. Yeah. Uh, Actually... All of their albums except came out in the 70s, except for the them. first one. First two. The first... Well, hold on. Yeah, the first two. Which, apparently, came out in 1969, which is surprising. Yeah, they You would did. think that they would space them out, but no, they both came out in the same year, which is... Yep, they recorded the second one while on tour in the U.S. through the first. No wonder they had to have drugs, my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, maybe. Uh, Especially uh, the drummer. Which yeah. brings me to the band members. Actually, before... Before that, though. Before we do that, the reason why I wanted... I kind of said okay to this. I'm not necessarily a band type of guy. Yeah. I'm getting into them slowly but surely. Like, I, I want to do Led Zeppelin. Yeah. The reason why I did this band is because... One of the bands that kind of sort of brought them to stardom sort of not like not like not they're not connected to this band but yeah. they're loosely very loosely because they're from britain right yeah yeah so they're kind of loosely because this band kind of paved the way for them the beatles yeah yeah they actually released their last song fairly recently <laughs> yeah yeah i saw that which i can't which i could not believe that they actually <laughs> kind of interesting but they actually okay. did that yeah i mean i guess john lennon wrote it and you, peter jackson used his technology that he used for his get back documentary to mm -hmm. you know kind of highlight the voices of john lennon and all that and uh oh george harrison that both died and yeah. highlighted their voices and i guess Paul McCartney and uh, Ringo, who are both still alive, they recorded their singing and all that for this song, I think. But 
Yeah. Yeah. So it kind of got me on a uh, sort of a Beatles kick and sort of a hmm. 60s, 70s music kick. Yeah. Now, I guess. So, yeah, I wanted to learn more about Led Zeppelin. So, sorry for uh, cutting in there, but who is in Led Zeppelin Go? Well, we have... How, how many? How many four. band members? Four? Yeah. Just like the Beatles. Yes. Just like kind folks. They, they were like the Fab Four of the oh. the 70s. Uh, I, I, I see. Did they have giant hair? Yes. Oh, good. good. And the stash, of course. Oh, the stash? They had the giant hair and the giant stash? Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. Okay. Oh, yeah. Some of them, sometimes they had the full beard and stash. Oh, nice. Just oh. just hair coming out of all pores. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, all right, who who is in the band? The four members. We have the lead singer, uh, or really the only vocalist in the band for the most part, uh, Robert Plant. Okay, this this he other than Led Zeppelin? Do I know him from anything? Unless you've heard some of his obscure uh, solo work. Then probably not. Oh, okay. Which even I don't really know much about that. Oh, oh, oh! I think I know one person on. Oh yeah. In the band. Who's but, that? But continue, continue with your. Uh, continue okay. with Band members. We I have just, just looked at the band here. Ah, okay. We have a. Uh, Bonzo, the drummer. Bonzo the drummer. That's not his real name. Of okay. course. Uh, Who's it? What's his real name? For some reason, oh, yeah. it escapes me. Uh, <laughs> John Bonham. Okay. Yeah. Yes. And we got my all-time favorite bassist ever, uh, John Paul Jones. Oh, yep. Yeah. You know him? Yes. From you know, what? You, <laughs> from what? You... <laughs> You know where I figured him out from? My bass playing? No. Back when I had a bass? No. Okay. It was from the Brady Bunch, actually. There was an episode where okay. he sung <coughs> a song, what? and he guest starred He guest starred in the Brady Bunch. Maybe a different John Paul Jones? I don't know. But he was British. It could have been. He was, no, he was in the... It, no, wait. Brady Bunch was in the 70s. I keep on forgetting It probably that. was then. It was probably the same guy. But yeah, John Paul Jones was in the Brady Bunch, and there was a meme going on within TV land at the yeah. time where uh, they cut together every time the Brady Bunch said the name John Paul Jones. Yeah. And that just stuck out to me. Ha <laughs> ha. And I remember he sung an entire song without cutting. He just sang an entire song on the ep- on this episode. Wow! And just gate and Marsha just had like a ton of like admiration. Just was like, oh my gosh, it's John Paul Jones. Yeah, all that type of stuff. And I was like, oh, who the hell is John Paul Jones? E J P J. That's the only, and that's the only. That's the only connection I hmm. have. And he did not have a beard. He did not have a stash. Did he have one? He in had 69. He had a cur- he had the No, he uh, did not. He did not have a he did not have any facial hair. He just had like sort of longish hair that which as a kid I was like, why does he have long hair? Yeah. But yeah, anyway, that's yeah. my story of John Paul Jones. Yeah, great great bass player uh he did not play the bass though. He did. No, he did not play the bass oh, in this oh, episode. In that, oh, okay. He just sang a song. That's weird. Okay. <laughs> he just, that, that's he just sang a song in the mic. He, he he makes the bass guitar like its own like independent it was, instrument. It and, was a very you know, v- it was a very very flowery song. That's all I remember. It was like oh, a very John. Why? It was very uh. Well, that upbeat. Do you remember Austin Powers? It was very much in tune with a type of song like that. I have no idea why. Thank you, girl, for making the whole world brighter, girl. You remember that song? You ever heard of that song? I think so. That he sung that song. Okay. Yeah, that's all. That's all. I. That's the only connection I. (laughs) Wow. I know. So 
It's yeah. very interesting. You sh- we should do a commentary on that episode. That'd be interesting, maybe so. Um, yeah, he made the, the bass kind of its own independent instrument, unlike, you know, many rock groups where the bass is kind of like a a thing that you hear it, but you don't hear it, like, in your face. It's kind of like a subtle thing that adds a lower end to the guitar almost. But no, John Paul Jones uh, like for the longest time listening to some of these Zeppelin songs, I thought that was the guitar. But then it was actually the bass. I'm like dun, 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 Are you kidding dun, 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 me? Dun, 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 dun. That sounds amazing. Especially like if you want an example, a uh, heartbreaker bass only on YouTube, yeah, that's that's pretty epic. Quite. Uh, so yeah, John Paul Jones, and then we have uh, the legend, the man, the myth. Except he's not a myth because he's real. Jimmy Page. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. That you want to talk about a very uh, well, highly regarded uh, musician. Just period. There you go. I have uh, studied that man's work maybe a little bit too much. I'm not gonna lie. I've tried my best not to dun, 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 uh, go on a tangent. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, that's Cream and Clapton. Is that from him? No, that's okay. uh, Eric Clapton. Uh, different band, uh, different song, different album. But, yeah, uh, Jimmy Page used, like, all these different instruments and amplifiers, combos that he would combine, and speaker cabinets for just some of this really obscure stuff that you would never know existed unless you purposefully looked it up and tried to figure it out because if you think of what people played through back in the day it's not that it's just, I'll leave it at that it's hard to find obscure stuff that if you were gonna buy one today would cost probably several thousand if not tens of thousands so we'll leave it at that uh, yeah that's uh, that's the Fab Four of the 70s Quite. And yeah. Indeed. So here's the thing though. They have only, yeah. apparently, according to Wikipedia, that's the only place I know. Yeah. There's the only, they only have eight albums, is that correct? I believe so, yes. Yeah. So Is that like the original releases? <clears throat> like the original studio albums, not the live albums. Not the live albums compilation ones either compilation ones okay now compilation ones actually there was one released in the 80s and all the rest were released in like the 90s to early to or oh seven 90s to 2008 actually okay oh, which is yeah. kind of interesting somewhere around there i don't know if they got back together they didn't okay well, they they've done some reunions but i don't think you'll ever see them be a perform again like a formal group anymore they also and we'll get the to live, that the live albums they uh the live albums some of those are long yeah they wow one came together in the 70s one came together in the 90s one came in 2003 and one came in 2012 yeah actually uh since you bring that up let's go over that real quick before <clears throat> we dive deeper what, into the what the live ones. albums yeah all right well before we do that yeah. Let's talk about how they got together. Oh, uh, let's see. How do they get together? <sighs> Let me see if I can remember. Uh, my understanding of it is, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, anyone in the comments, uh, Jimmy Page was in a band called The Yardbirds, with some other people I forgot the names of, and uh, Jeff Beck, may he rest in peace, because he did die recently. Um, and then we have 
Robert Plant, who was like known as a, a good uh, blues singer or something. Uh, uh, John Bonham was a very good friend of Robert Plant, so they they already knew each other. And uh, John Paul Jones, I think, was someone that Jimmy Page had met while he was doing some of... Uh, what is it called? Oh my god, I can't remember the name of it. It's like when you're you're uh, making music pieces for the for jamming out. No, just like for the purpose of having music for something, like for like playing a song that's gonna go in a commercial or something Recording? like that. Recording? No. Oh, what is the name of it? It's like some <laughs> session work. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Session work. Uh, yeah. Okay. I think he met John Paul Jones through the session work, if I'm not mistaken. I could be totally wrong on that. Uh, During Beck's Bolero? What? Beck's Bolero. Okay. They recorded a song together in 1966, mm. and that was the first time oh. John Paul Jones was in connection with anybody in the band according to wikipedia okay oh i didn't know that well there you go so yeah that is how they all met and then they came together at luton college of technology apparently where just the yardbirds played their final gig and then they were like yeah this were, they all like kept leaving and doing other things and then they started led zeppelin and then that blew up way bigger than they probably ever dreamed it would. Yeah, that, that got massive. In 1968, they played together for the first time in a room yep. below a record studio Yep, on Garrett's <sighs> Gerard yes. Street. Yes. Quite. And they just kept on rolling. <laughs> Until 1980, yeah. They did. Indeed. So... I guess let's go over the uh, the albums because you are probably more acquainted with the albums yeah. than their actual history. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, All right, then. So let's. Well, first, what about those live albums? Oh, indeed. Let's talk about those live well, albums. Just a, a brief mention. Because, to be fair, there's one, two, three, four. Yeah, four live albums actually. So. Not and not too shabby or not too big to begin with. So let's yeah. talk about that then. So well, uh, does the song? What are they? What's the first one? The first one. First, I'm doing more than. You well, you, that's about first, to change though. The first one in 1976 was the song that. Yeah. The song, song remains, remains the yep, same. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. that's a good one. One in 1997, aka. The Linden's birthday. Is that how the West was won? No, that's BBC Sessions. Oh yeah, that one. In yeah. two thousand three. Forgot about that one. Two thousand three was how the West was won. That one's more like a compilation of various live performances. And then twenty twelve is Celebration Day. So ah uh, yes, let's talk about those then. What did? What is? So well, it's more of a brief mention though. All like, right. Uh, well, what is the song that remains the same? What's what's that all about? Uh, that one was... Was that the one they did at Madison Square Garden? I don't know. Because I know they did perform there at some point. Uh, it might have been. Uh, I mean, I don't listen to the live ones as much, but it's... It is from the three nights of concerts at Madison Square Garden. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. Wanted to get my facts right, so... Yeah, uh, they were already pretty popular at that point. Uh, yeah, they were actually known in their, in, especially at, in those days, to be pretty uh, hardcore in the, the partying. Like, uh, they, the drummer, uh, John Bonham especially, was, uh, yeah, he was a big, big partier. And insane in the membrane. You could say that. Apparently, also BBC Sessions 
it's kind of interesting. It's more on the uh, the collectors, yeah, type of thing, I guess. Where mm-hmm. like the first the first disc was material from four different 1969 sessions from the BBC. Yep. Disc two is from the 1971 concert from Paris, Paris Theatre in London. Yeah. Disc three was included in a limited run of albums and featured rare interviews from 1969, 76, 77, and 1990. Oh, okay. So it wasn't even music. It was just interviews, which for the Led Zeppelin fan... Yeah. That'd probably be pretty dope. It's like if you found interviews from the Beatles, if you will. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same thing there. Um, then, uh, How the West Was Won is, what? uh, that has one of the best sounding guitar tones I've ever heard on a live album. That it was at the, this is the only time I will ever say that. A song sounds as good as a studio recording does. Which, which, which is, song was that? A whole lot of love. Which song was that? A whole lot of love. Okay. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. I mean, I can't understand what you're doing. With it. <gasps> yeah. Um, anyway. All right. Very different sounding, but good. Indeed. Indeed. So, yeah. Pretty dope. So, yeah. That, that apparently, How the West Was Won took place. Be- Two 1972 performances in California during the tour of North America. Yep. That's right. Yep. <clears throat> Celebration Day. You know anything about Celebration Day, son? That one, I believe, is where they did that. That is the reunion thing, I think. Yes. Where they got back to... The remaining people got back together. It's, it's the concert film and live album recorded in 2007. Which is kind of interesting because it took place in twenty. This release released in twenty twelve. So that's yeah. sort of hmm. weird how slow that yeah. took. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Do they? I guess they've. Uh, oh, it was given a thea- limited theatrical release in twenty twelve. Oh, okay. That's probably why I guess. But I don't know why it took that long. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. Huh, couldn't tell you. So uh, what is it the uh, is it the best best of, I guess? No, that's well I mean that's probably what they played, but I don't think it was like a, it's not like a best of compilation album. They do have some of those also. Well but, I know that, but was did they basically play the their best of selection or yeah, what? For the most part, yeah. Uh, well, all right then. Those are the live albums. Yes. Let's, let's, let's talk about the studio albums, all eight of them. Yes. I guess they're golden age. If they do, they have a dark age, <sighs> or do they not? I would say, per your uh, 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 periodic table of element ranking system that you use, uh, they just had a. Gold and silver, really. Quite. They didn't have. They. I mean, there are some albums that I'm. I don't get into as much, but most of their stuff's pretty good. All right. So uh, let's talk. Blood Zeppelin one. Okay. So the golden age. I guess. Yeah. The golden <laughs> age it is. Uh, Starting on the golden age, which I'm holding a copy of that I found today. And which, was not expecting to. Which is the talk about a happy little accident. The album picture is the Hindenburg disaster. It is. <laughs> yes, uh, which that is, is exactly right. Kind of morbid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so messed up. But uh, <laughs> like, you can, <laughs> if you really look at it, like you could even see it's got like smoke and fire oh, coming out the oh, back oh, of it. Oh my God. <laughs> Uh, oh, the humanity! Yeah. Oh. So, that is probably one of their more famous album covers. Uh, one of my favorites, for sure. Probably my second favorite of their album covers. Uh, mm-hmm. But, Dude. yeah. Let's, so Let's talk about the music. What's, so. What are some, let's say, 
How many, how many songs are on this album here? Uh, let's see. We got... Just number. Nine. Nine? What is your top... Five songs? Songs you can't live without. Okay. It's hard to put them in order, but... If you had a gun to your head, what songs would be at the top of this album? Do, 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 do. I would say... Uh, number five? Communicate... Uh, oh, number five is gonna be... Days and Confused. Days and Confused, a.k.a. a... Yes. Film from the 90s. That's also true. I wonder, does is that the song in the movie? I don't know. I, was I only saw it that. once, I've and I it. was very tired when I saw it. It probably is. Ah. Gotcha. gotcha. I, I, would, I would be surprised if it wasn't, because... Richard Linklater, the director of said movie, has a lot of connections, so I would assume that he did... I mean, he had to obtain the rights to the name, probably. So yeah. So, I yeah. would assume that... Which, you know, Zeppelin didn't quite write it. Actually, uh... It was like... It's almost like a cover song. Interesting. From of, who? Uh, some guy I cannot remember the name of. Because hmm. I've never heard of him, and that's the only thing I know about him. Alright. Number four. Uh... Number four is gonna be back. album back after you put it down. You yeah. Freak it back. Uh, number four is gonna be. Do 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 that has one of the most beautiful sounding fuzz pedal guitar tones I've ever heard. Nice, nice. All right. I mean, the four. whole fuzz tone on that album is just like, oh, father dearest, you know. Oh yes. You know. Number three. Number three. Good times, bad times. You know I had my share. Yeah, that's the name of it. It's good times, bad times. Points. What's what's so special about this? Song? Why should people listen to this? My god, when you hear it, the the opening of it, it's just like all of this sudden in your face, like, turn, 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 like, gosh. Golly gee. Yeah. Uh, what is, what, number two? Number two. Number two. Uh, wow. uh let me see. If this one's on here. Oh, okay. I'm gonna give you my top four because, okay, top number five. Four. Let's the the previous three <laughs> are all gonna move up one spot. <laughs> number five is gonna be uh, <laughs> so, okay, probably we're... Black Mountain Side. Okay, okay. It's more of like a ballad acoustic song, but it's good for that kind of thing. Okay, of I, the of the remaining songs on the album, that's probably the one I like the most. So yeah. Okay, what's your number one then? Because <laughs> we moved it all up. Now it's number one. How many more times? Dun, 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 dun. Please, please, no. Dun, 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 please, please me. Is that no? That's I thought that was from the Beatles. They, it is from the Beatles. That's All right, why you know I was, that's what that's I, I thought they sang. Yeah. Anyway, uh, no. How many more times? Uh, kind of a long one, but this has got this beautiful like stereo thing where you've got a fuzz, like a high level of fuzz on one side for my guitar nerds out there, and the other side's got just like a more of like a light fuzz overdriven sound and it's just like down 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 it's just catchy and uh quite yeah uh great song 
And uh, another uh, quick fact about that album is uh, on this album, it's the only one where Jimmy Page did not have his uh, number one, as it's called, Les Paul. He used his Fender Telecaster with the dragon painted on it. And he played it through the Supro uh, Coronado amplifier that was modified because it fell off of a truck or something and had a different speaker and some uh, parts that were replaced with something that was a different value which was all that they had available but yeah uh, yeah Zeppelin 1 that's a good one indeed probably my third favorite album they did and now the best from, one they ever did i guess the best one they ever did also in the same year literally months this is after their, the first one this is their magnum opus in my opinion led zeppelin 2 son how many how many songs uh ha, ha, ha. probably the whole album how many songs this, they're all good are in the album uh, I do not know the number off the top of my head, because I'm kind of exhausted, but I'm not going to lie. Let me pull this up. Oh. Well, here's something I'm going to be talking about. Okay. <clears throat> Once I figure out... Oh, track listing, here we go. Five... What the heck? Oh. Nine. Nine songs. What is your top... What is your top five of these songs? Oh, let's see. And one of them better be this one that I'm going to talk about. I'm curious which one that might be. Uh, Actually, two. The only, the only reason why is just an offhanded mention of something. Ah, yes. Uh, let's see... Probably, you said top five. Top five. Okay. Out of their top. Out of their top nine. <laughs> well, that's gonna be a tough one. It is. <sighs> Man. Okay. Uh. Let's see. What is it gonna be? Start with. Uh. You man, you're making this hard. Well, <laughs> this doesn't gun care. To your, gun to your head. No, the the gun will be way less needed in a few years in this timeline. What do you what? The gun in the head oh. will be way less needed soon. Oh, okay. After this, <sighs> yes. So, number five. Number five is gonna be probably. Oh my god. Uh, Moby Dick is an honorable number six. And we'll that was the one that I was going to off make an offhand comment comment that it's uh inspired by the book. Actually No, Lemon Song is uh, number six. Lemon Song? The Lemon Song. Uh, the Lemon Song. Although it's really tied with Moby Dick, in my opinion. Okay. Number five. Moby Dick. Why, why is Moby Dick number five? A.K.A. the oh my God, one based just, on the book. It's got... You, you know... It's funny. They named it that, but... Also named Past Delight. It's... Um... Just a... Is there any... There's a... Is, a, there, is there any, uh... Men genital... <laughs> men genital... Tania, Gen genitalia in this. I have no idea. Song. No. Um, not that I'm aware of. It's just a very, very, very good guitar riff that I love playing. And the rest of the entire song, all uh, four minutes and 25 seconds of it, is a drum solo. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You one just... second of guitar riffing, and the other one, the other four yeah, minutes. Yeah, probably is... like 
15. It is... Not 30. It hard to is say. It is 4 minutes and 25 yeah. seconds. Yeah, the majority is... I will probably get Lip Lash vibes from that from the movie, which is not... Depends on... No lyrics, by the way. Ah, well, then I'll definitely get Whiplash vibes from it, a.k.a. the movie. Ah. It's the scariest movie I've ever seen in my life, but anyway. Ah, okay. Number four. Uh, number four is going to be... Dude. God. Dude. Am I I can't even... My brain's just not working. Okay. We may have to move them all up again. <laughs> oh, come on. Come on! Okay. Six. Number five. No, number four. I'm, I'm counting them out for us. <laughs> Six. Five. Uh, four. Six. Five. <sighs> Four, three, two, one. Okay, yeah. All right, we're good. <sighs> Number four. Number four is gonna be bring it on home. Okay, why is that on number four? <sighs> <laughs> These are all like so such so slight differences <laughs> that make them ranked. And uh, even then, I could interchange them just given a different day <laughs> of what I feel like listening to. But uh, it's got a, like a bluegrass kind of folk country intro. It's like... Dun, 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 you go get, out in watch the woods this, to to Watch this trust. train go down the track. Dun, 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 dun. Watch out! Watch out! Whatever the hell that means, but that's what it's... You go out in the woods today, you're sure of a big surprise. Yeah, for real. Uh, we, we get to that kind of stuff more uh, on the fourth album, but, uh, and the third one. Yeah, uh, then we get this amazing, like, fuzzy, that guitar, a lot of fuzz pedal usage here, and, uh, using a very, um, Obscure amp again, the Vox UL 430. Look that up if you want to see how much that costs. It's a, a big number, and that's why I don't have one. Uh, maybe even just plug the guitar into the recording console, which we'll get to that more on the fourth album. But yeah, it's like. <laughs> it's just very distorted and catchy riff and uh plants vocals are kind of distorted sounding a little bit to give it like a lo-fi thing almost it's it's all a good one good song quite now number three number three is the song that jimmy page hates playing and never played live except maybe once I don't even know if he did it once uh, Plant has performed it a few times and Ooh. it is living, loving, maid she's just a woman what? living, loving, maid okay she's just a woman it ah, I see. alright why is this number three? again more just unique in a good way, crazy, good, overdriven guitar tones, man. Just, and this one's more of like a catchy radio hit. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I don't know if it was, literally, but it's kind of, it's it, got that kind of vibe to it. It probably was. Uh, especially in the 70s. Yeah. Uh, it's got a Vox Phantom 12-string guitar. That's another obscure one. Uh wouldn't mind having one someday where on one side of the stereo track it's uh, <laughs> a cl just a normal cleaner 12 string and then you have the other sides of fuzzy 12 string which 
<laughs> in itself is just bizarre. A fuzz on a 12 string. Go figure. Sounds good though. Uh, yeah. It's, nice. I think, the shortest song on the album, too. Hmm, I see. Number yeah. two. Heartbreaker! Oh, okay. What I'm thinking about should be number one, but... I, I hope it is. Alright, what is... Why is this number two? Well, uh... It's number two because... The thing that's number one is just that good that it, it can't be topped by any of the others. But Why is this number the, two and not number three or number four? It's significantly better than the others, but not as good as... Although still amazing and one of the best they ever did. Not as amazing as what's coming up for number one. Uh... This one used a, God, what is it, a Rickenbacker Transonic amp. Good luck finding one of those. Uh, I don't know if I'll let I ever will see one, but yeah. Uh, very catchy riff. The uh, lyrics are about like a, um, oh, what is it? It's like a th thing about a woman that you're trying to date and it's then she's just in it f like for the fun or not serious about it you know something something like that hmm. up to interpretation though but that's my take on it oh uh, quite that is one of uh, John Paul Jones's two best uh, bass tracks <clears throat> the dum, 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 dum. Like that's it's very powerful. Very good sounding on vinyl as well, I might add, so yeah. Number one. No want a whole lot of love. Sorry, what it's is probably it? not the one you wanted it to be. What is it? Whole lot of love. Oh no, it's not is it Misty? No, no, that's not, kind of, that's a later one. Not Misty. No, that's. I was thinking of one on the fourth album. What one were you thinking of? Well, first, explain okay, why sure. it's number one. <sighs> hmm. It's one of those things that's hard to, very hard to put into words. Uh, stupidly catchy guitar riff. Uh, one of the most famous uses of Jimmy Paul's uh, <laughs> Jimmy Page is a uh, uh, number one Jimmy Paul. Jimmy Paul. I, I'm sorry, that's awful. <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> Jimmy Paul. <laughs> oh, oh god. Uh, forgive me. Uh, please. Uh, anyway, forgive him in the comments below. Yes. Uh, Jimmy Page's number one Les Paul. That he named number one, I might add. Uh, yeah, it's so good. Just the the guitar recording is just so catchy. Like you, it's stuck in your head for a long time, and uh, what the whole album does. But uh, that, and on top of that, the The, the bass on this one's also really good uh, and it it's like mixed where the bass and the guitar like blend together perfectly as separate instruments that like make this one very very good guitar tone that just sounds perfect and even though the guitar by itself is kind of eh I love it it's one of my favorites, but it, you know, it's up for debate, of course. Um. I, after not listening to a single word of this, yep. only looking on the Wikipedia page, was thinking about Ramble On. Ramble On! A.K.A. 
that took heavy inspiration from the Lord of the Rings. Yes, and it did. King. I knew that was going to be it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what the heck? What, what, uh, uh, son? That's my number seven. Number seven? Ah! It's, uh, I don't, ah! it's... Uh, Garbage. This is, Heresy. It's hard to rank these songs, though. Like, Heresy. All, this entire album, I would rank above several of their later songs, though. Including and if I stay, that one's probably number eight. I see. All right, that's a good song. I I have nothing against it. It's just that's, I like the heavier stuff more. That's my number one. Okay, just for the probably my things. number two of their entire yeah auto albumography. What is what discography? Is discography. Yeah. That they currently have because I haven't listened to it, but already number two, nice, number one, nice tie in. The number one is on the next album. On I the next feeling. album, yes, because I actually heard the song, the immigrant song. Yes. <laughs> that that wow. that sound. The hot springs blow. Yeah, the first time I heard that, probably be from Thor Ragnarok, but still, yeah. it's a great song. Yeah. Uh, it is abs- It is yeah. just very, very catchy. It is. Uh, Although it ends very abruptly. I don't, I don't like I don't like how it ends, though. It ends very... Uh, it just kind of is like... Mm-hmm. Oh, the... Uh, and then all of a sudden just ends, and I'm like, what? That's it. Uh, maybe you're listening to the extended cut of it. I don't. I don't even know. Where it's he's just... like, he's like, ooh, 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 yeah, at the yeah. end. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just like, uh huh. What, what? 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 Like what? You, you what? came out. You came out so strong, and then you ended with a whimper, and I'm like, um. Ended with the. Yeah. 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 But anyway, great song. Anyway. Yeah. Led Zeppelin three. No. We we tangent it off a tad bit. Okay. The last thing on a whole lot of love is the very famous uh, middle section where there was a lot of like freestyling instrumental stuff and plants like ah, 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 and you know just. It's it's got that psychedelic thing going for it for sure. Uh, acid trip friendly, indeed. Uh, and then Paige comes out of it, you know, after playing his theremin and his uh, detuned uh, Les Paul custom that he detuned and went. Boom, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, had a had a good time there. Quite. Yeah, uh, comes out That's... strong with a solo. With the cocked wah pedal. Oh, what? yeah, then there's a slide guitar with the cocked wah as well. A lot of stuff going on on that one. Mm-hmm. Number yeah. three. Led Zeppelin three. Hey, I, hey. You're going to be disappointed. The album that came out finally a year. <laughs> they finally gapped it a little bit, finally. Yeah. So, yeah, let's do... Since we're... Running a little short on time, and we still got a lot. We still got like, what, six? Yeah, but albums? the rest to go by way faster. Okay. We already let's, talked about like two of their three best. Let's do top three for. I like it. Three. Oh god. Um. <laughs> <laughs> gotta keep you on your toes. <laughs> <sighs> because this one has ten top. Three. Oh no. <laughs> this is not one of my favorite of their albums, to be honest. Uh, Although it has my favorite song. <laughs> yeah, see, that's the thing. It's that one and then a Everything bunch of others. <laughs> bunch of <laughs> they, they worked on that one and then just I guess. crapped down the other ones. Maybe. Uh, uh, what is it? I don't know. I don't know. Is it Hats Off to Roy Harper? Uh, Tangerine's not bad. 
Eh, three's probably... Oh my gosh, what the... Okay. Hats off to Roy Har Harper. Uh, number two is going to be Tangerine. If it's the one I think it is. And then an Immigrant Song, because that's like the only al song on the album I care about. If, if <laughs> what? Sadly. Okay. What, why are these... Why are the other two... The, the rest of them are just like... What is, what is flowery ballad slow like English folklore type stuff. it's like yeah what is this <laughs> dun, 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 dun. I'm oh, actually baby, yes. I'm actually surprised dun, 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 dun. I mean they really what? here's the deal too I mean I don't know how or why or actually it kind of aligns but yeah Lord of the Rings was really popular <sighs> with the, uh, the hippies Fact, that makes sense. In fact, okay. In fact, the Beatles, the Beatles was are actually trying to make a Lord of the Rings live action film with them in the starring roles. I could see that. Ringo was gonna be like Gollum or something. Oh god, <laughs> which would, would have been hilarious. That would have been pretty funny. Uh, uh, but thank God that didn't happen. We got the trilogy. But anyway, we did. Yes. Uh, yeah. So <sighs> the reason I don't know why they went flowery, but. They I, did. Yeah, I guess they did. They got inspired. I guess they read Lord of the Rings, I guess. Yeah, they, uh, I believe that was the one where they <clears throat> were, like, out in the, like, the cottage in the forest or something. <laughs> where they, That's where they wrote it at for, like, artistic creation purposes. Which is fine, but, uh, I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't know okay. why, but that's what they did. So, uh, I guess we're done with Led Zeppelin 3 then? Yeah. Wow, okay. Now, on to <sighs> Untitled. The last one that may take a little longer is this one. Untitled, <laughs> a.k.a. Led Zeppelin 4, unofficially. Yes, which I am holding in my hand in CD form. Did what? not see it on vinyl, unfortunately, but I will I'll, get that. Before we begin, let me already say my top one, the one that I will actually listen to Misty actually give a crap about, or two that I actually give a crap about okay. two, Battle of Evermore oh yeah, that's the other Scottish in, one Scottish Independence War I, I have no idea why the only reason why I'll, watch, I'll listen to this is because <laughs> Taylor Swift has an Evermore <laughs> album, so I just figured okay, my, maybe a connection oh, there okay <laughs> Uh, but also, oh no, Stairway to Heaven. Yeah, that's on this album. Yeah, I forgot. I think I listened to that one. I don't remember it's it. It's a very I long one. Seven. It's almost eight minutes, and a lot of it's like acoustic guitar, more English ballad, folklore type stuff. And then it comes to the end, and it gets more epic and more like the kind of stuff I like. Yeah, featuring. And my favorite the Telecaster again. My favorite song that I haven't listened to, but I will listen to later on, what? Misty Mountain Hop. The best of the three or four uh Lord of the Rings <laughs> Zeppelin songs <laughs> is that one for sure. Lord of the best of the... Where, where would you rank it? Number number twenty? What? This Misty Mountain Hop? Where would you rank it as on this album? Oh, no, it's way above 20. That one is actually a good, like, classic hard rock song. Does this... Like, okay. Eight songs, where would, you, where, would you rank, where would you rank it? Uh, we doing top three again? Yes. Okay. That's gonna be... If you were to rank it, which, where would it... Where three would it or four. Oh, three or four. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Kind of folks. Okay. Interchangeable with a, uh, uh, four sticks. Oh, they nice. kind of <clears throat> take up the three and four All spot right. together. Uh, Number two. Rock and roll. <laughs> oh my god. That, that is okay. A, I'm still trying to figure out how that guitar tone was made. That one's got me a little baffled. I think it's a combination of a cocked wah pedal in directly into the mixing console. 
exploits. Interesting. <sighs> this is no amp. I, it's kind of odd, but okay. Number one. Number one. Black Dog. Why Black Dog? It's just that good. How is it that good? It's one of... Give me, give me, give me reasons. <laughs> it's so catchy, it's not even funny. It's just very heavy hitting with the, the like the crazy spitting distorted guitar from plugging into the mixing console directly combined with the again John Paul Jones's amazing bass playing that I just don't think can be topped really and it's like nice. Noise. Yeah, yeah, by definition. Uh, it is... Oh my god, I love that song to death. Alright. I, I I could spend hours probably talking about that one, like the entirety of Zeppelin 2, but I won't. Houses of the Holy, a.k.a. The Silver the Age begins here. <laughs> okay, <laughs> why does the Silver Age begin here? <laughs> There's going to be a lot more. Let me look that up on Wikipedia <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Why does the Silver Age begin here, then? It, just... uh, it starts... The songs start getting more... Less of like... Yeah, boy. More like... <laughs> what the... <laughs> did I just listen to? <laughs> more flowery music. Not... As bad as Zeppelin 3, but <laughs> okay. Okay. it's more just like, I don't even know, it's just randomness. <laughs> randomness. What is the, what is a good, what is a good, uh, let me pull it up. What is a good, what is it, comparison here. To what? this album here what the f did i just listen to this album's one of the better ones of this era but to be fair they also they took a two hour hiatus from two two year two year hiatus from making albums yeah this one came out in 73 instead of 71 yes uh I don't know. They just their sound really changed when they went when they got back. It's softer. A little bit. It's a little more like pop sounding almost. Uh, oh, I can already tell the song remains the same. Yeah. Uh, even though, even though that's from like a, I we already listened to that, but I can already hear the popness from that name there. Let me see if this is the one I'm thinking it is. The Rain Song. Yep. Over the Hills and Far Away. Yeah. I think Over the Hills and Far Away is the one I'm thinking of. Uh, uh, 12 string. See, now we're getting to the, the later Zeppelin stuff that I'm not as familiar with. Okay, it's... <sighs> Zeppelin 12-string songs. Okay. I had it mixed up with the other one. That's why I looked. Uh, I'd have to hear that one again to tell you about it. Uh, uh, the notable ones are, uh, Over the Hills and Far Away. That's a good one. Alright, well, that's, that's number three? Or is that That's number two? probably number two. Okay, what's number three? Number three is... Dire Maker, is that how it's pronounced? Dire Maker. I think that's the one that's kind of got like a... Dire Maker. It's almost like a <laughs> reggae sound. It's like... <laughs> I'm like... 
I mean, it's it's not bad sounding. Yeah, not oh, quite in that territory. <laughs> Give a little. That that was from their uh, uh, buddies in the funk soul R and B scene. Quite from war and number one, the ocean. The o- with the blah 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 blah. Yeah, that's a, again another very catchy Jimmy Page guitar riff, but it's not quite on the level of the earlier stuff. All right. It's still pretty good. Physical Graffiti, a.k.a. Another two years. Yeah. From 73 to 75, they made this album. Taking their time now. Yes. Except for the next one. This is a cool album cover. Uh, It is, I guess it's New York... New York uh, apartments or something. Yeah. Or townhouses. It's kind of interesting. Something like that, yeah. Still in the Silver Age here. Not a whole lot of songs to talk about. No, we're going to be in the Silver Age until the end. <laughs> oh. uh, Custard, let's see. Custard Pie. Yes, yeah, the names of some of these, they come up. It's like... Okay. <laughs> what the... <laughs> exactly. Yeah, there's... Okay. There's five, nine... What? 10, 11, 12. 15 songs on this. Yeah. Interesting. Well, you got three. So, what's your top three, son? Uh, let's see if this is the album. Okay, yeah. This one has... The top three are... <clears throat> Wait, unless it's... Oh, no. Okay. The light... Gone. Boogie with Boogie with Stew is one of the funniest names. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Boogie with st- Boogie with Stew. That's it. <laughs> it was not one that I was overly excited for, but yeah. Cashmere. Cashmere. We'll get to that one. Okay. Number, Number three. three. Houses of the Holy. The, the Wonton Song. That's not in the top three, I'm afraid, because <laughs> I don't even remember what that how that one goes. Boogie with Stew. That's the best title, though. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, Houses of the Holy is pretty good. I think that's the one that's like... I think that's that one. Uh... Number two is, and correct me if I'm wrong on that, number two is Trampled un- Underfoot. Very catchy. St- more more like the, the good old golden days of Zeppelin. Mm. Uh, for, for a second there, I thought you were singing the, uh, oh, what is, what is that, the, uh, Cantina song from Star Wars. Dun, 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 it's sim- dun, dun, it does kind of sound like that a little bit. George, uh, Jorge, jo- John, John George Williams. Yeah. Um, did, did did you cop? Did Johnny you, uh, Will. Did you uh, did, uh, did, did you copy and not give credit? <laughs> yeah. What what is that? He, uh, yeah. Uh, 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 something we were dribbled into our brains to not never do. What is that? Oh, plagiarize. Plagiarize? Did you plagiarize John Williams? Exactly. exactly. Jo- Johnny? Johnny W? Yep. Yeah. Johnny Will? Johnny yeah. Will? Oh, uh, no. Kidding. We're kidding, of course. It's... Oh, yeah. Uh, that's a great song. Uh, it's good. Uh, give it a listen. A great use of the wah pedal. In. Dutably. Number one. Cashmere. <laughs> You've heard this one, I know, without okay, knowing what the is name it? of it. What is this? Da da da. Oh yeah, from yeah. some movie. There you go. Exactly. I knew it was in something. I I don't I don't sort of like that, yeah. Some superhero movie. It can't be Iron Man. 
I don't think it was. was. Oh my I forget gosh. what it was in. Uh, but yeah. yeah. Oh, I oh I know it. What? Oh god. That is a very catchy song. That's it gonna, that's goes gonna... on forever, but it's very cool sounding. Played on the famous, uh, uh, cheaply built Dan Electro fifty nine. Uh, which, if you want a reasonable by vintage guitar standards priced vintage electric guitar, it is Iron Man. Oh, okay. The first Iron Man. Okay. It makes sense. Great movie just for the it's just, soundtrack. Yeah. It, it's, uh... I mean, the... the they, while he was... Yeah. Uh, oh, it was... It was while he was making the, uh... Making his first ever Iron Man suit in the... In the uh, Arabian Caves. Oh, that okay. That playing. makes sense. It's got, like, an Arabic, uh... Uh... It's not because of that. It's because of the probably the banging on the metal and the like. Da 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 da. Oh okay. Uh, what is it? An Arabic scale is what they use when they wrote it. Uh, it goes on forever. Uh, and has like a symphony orchestra that comes in at some points, and uh, plants just there saying, "Baby, take me there." Oh, baby, take me there! Take me there! At the end, so... That's, yeah, one of their cult classics for sure. Quite. quite. Good good song. Almost bought a copy of that in at a second in Charles in Florida, funny enough. But I didn't. Indubitably. And now, Presence, a.k.a. the lowest-selling album That's of the band. That's what I apparently. was gonna say probably... This might be <laughs> with a picture of a family oh, looking God, at man. a looking at a dildo or something. <laughs> I don't even know what the hell. It's this like is. A, a statue, something decorative on the table. Just just looking at it, okay. smiling. Yeah. Made in 1976. Uh, released in 1976. <sighs> <laughs> what I don't is even know. One? That's that's your that's your department. Seven songs. Oh, okay, this has some that aren't too bad. Uh, huh. Okay, I don't know if I can pick a number three. Because there's only two that are good. <laughs> oh, oh, um, oh! Roasted, yeah. roasted. I, I, half of these, I'm pretty sure ones that I don't know what they are because I was browsing through it and it was like, eh, it's okay, whatever. All right, okay. number two. Yeah, uh, Achilles' Last Stand. That one is just okay. <laughs> eh, I, it's, it's okay. All right. Uh, I'm trying to even remember how it goes. Uh, nobody's fault but mine is number one. Whew. Is that a good one? Yeah, that is a damn good use of a phaser pedal with the MXR Phase ninety. Like, it, it's a good one. Uh, All right. Nice best phase pedal song outside of uh, Van Halen. Yeah, it would and now, put it that way. The last album, In Through the Outdoor, okay, which came out in 1979 and is the last album before the death of the drummer John Bonham three months earlier before December 1980 when the band officially disbanded yes oh uh, you, you heard any of these songs son yes uh, this one was for whatever reason released in a paper bag released in a paper bag yeah I'm not sure why they did that but uh that's how it's packaged a lot of times uh Usually it's known for this picture of a guy in, like, a western saloon. 
as well. Yes, it is. Uh, Almost like Cheers. Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. Anyway. Cheers. Yep. Top three. Out of seven. Okay. This one's better than the last one. Uh, wait. No, never mind. Uh, <laughs> no, it's kind of... I This one and... Uh, More divisive. The one before it are kind of tied for me. Uh, let's see... This may also be a top two. Duh! Oh! Roasted! What a roast! Number two, maybe... Carousel Umbra's number three. If it's the... I'd get, yeah, sure, why Duh, not? I, I can't even... I can't even pronounce the name of it. Do. Uh, so, number two is Hot Dog. It's hot dog. very, like, fast-paced and... Give me that hot dog! Catchy. It's Give me like, that hot dog! It's something Give me that like hot that. dog! And then Fool in the Rain is number one, because it's just hilarious. I don't... I, it's very, uh... What the beep? But it's good though. Quite. With the catchy like piano riff, like the dun 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 dun, and then uh, Jimmy Page plays this guitar solo with the these pedal names, the Blue Box, which is worth buying. Only for playing that song, in my opinion. But, uh, good song. Uh, it's like. Uh, it's something like that. It sounds very robotic and crunchy. It's weird. Uh, good, good song. And then there's a part where someone blows the, the lifeguard whistle like I used to have. It's like. And then we have the conga lines like dum da dum da dum dum da dum da dum da dum da dum da dum da. It's like okay. Uh, yeah. Indubitably. Now, everyone's favorite section here. Probably not Skitz's, because he has to choose his top five favorite songs. Ah, total. Of all time okay. of Led Zeppelin, uh, and name the album that it comes from because for the audience oh to God. look it up. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you mine. Sure. While you think about that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The, uh, I don't even know, so it's going to be top, t- top three. Okay. Number one, of course, Immigrant Song from Led Zeppelin 3. Only good song on the track released. <laughs> Number two, I'm gonna say Misty Mountain, whatever. Nice. Whatever that Misty Mountain one is. And then the third one is the other Tolkien one that I forgot. Ram Alone! Yeah, that one. Those are the three. I think the other two was from Blood Zeppelin 2. No, the the mm. the uh what no the the Misty Mountain Ho one Pop Misty Mountain Pop one Hop. was on was on a four, four yep. and then the other one was on two okay now I get there it. you go so top five okay start with number five. Well, that is a tall order. Um, we're gonna be in the early albums for sure. Uh, number five has got to be. Dude. How many more times? I think. 
Oh. From which album? First one. The first album with the Hindenburg Disaster. Yes. That song is just so good. That every part of it's good. It's just... <sighs> All right. Yeah. It's a good one. Uh, Number four. <laughs> Number four is probably... E gonna be... Oh man. Toilet bowl. Man, do, 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 do. toilet bowl. Got it. Got a pick. I'm going to gun to your head. <sighs> Probably going to be a uh... heartbreaker. Heartbreaker from which album? Number 2. Indubitably. Number 3. That's going to be... Uh, let me look at the listing here. Rock and Roll. That's a good one. From number four? But Yeah, that's number three. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, from, from Zeppelin Led 4. From Zeppelin 4. Yeah, the one with no title. Uh, yeah. duh. I mean, what? Uh, duh. Number, number two. <laughs> Numero dos. <laughs> oh, gosh, no. For I am a boss. Anyway, uh. <laughs> Numero dos. I am a boss. <laughs> uh, let's see. Black Dog. Black Dog from which album? Led Zeppelin 4. Number number one. I want a whole lot of love. Whole lot of love from <sighs> number, one. Yep, number two. Number two, indubitably. Final thoughts on Led Zeppelin. And that Sun. that could change day to day, though, just to, because a lot of the it's it's hard to pick and <sighs> yeah. <laughs> indubitably. Final thoughts on Led Zeppelin Sun. I. For me personally, I'm a big fan of Jimmy Page's work, and, you know, for years a lot of the stuff he did was, like, hidden knowledge, top secret stuff, and everyone was like, oh yeah, he played a Les Paul through a Marshall. He played Marshalls live, and on a lot of the later albums he played through the Marshall amp, but... No. Come to find out it's the stupidly rare uh, Vox amp that was made for like a year or something and now is worth like 14 grand if you find one. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, go figure. <laughs> go figure for real. Uh, another note, uh, one of, uh, what I would say is their best album cover is uh, the what is it called? Uh, the Mothership album pays homage to the first album with the the actual Zeppelin ship on it, but it's like the ship kind of flying down into a like a concert hall with like this the spotlights on it, and it's got this awesome retro '70s like red and black color scheme that. I think I just realized this today while we were out and about earlier when I at the place I bought my two albums today actually I believe that is a nod to the Atlantic record company labeling because I real I saw it's like that's the same color scheme and that's a very good uh best of compilation with mostly all the good ones and there aren't too many of the what the crap is this stuff songs on there so yeah how about your final thoughts my only final thoughts are that one Iron Man song yeah pretty Cashmere. 
Yeah. Cashmere's pretty dope. Yeah. I got some music to listen to now, because <laughs> Lord of the Rings music now, for, I mean, 1970s <laughs> Lord of the yeah. Rings music, probably listen to that, probably good gateway for me to listen to more of this music, but yeah. Immigrant Song, it's always going to hold a place in my heart, <laughs> even though it, even though it's a, uh, was in a 1980s inspired film, yeah. Thor Ragnarok. Surprisingly, it's actually. I think School a 70, of Rock had it. It's it? actually seventies. School of Rock with Jack not, Black. Oh, School of Rock. I thought you meant like School House Rock. No, 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 it's no. Like, no, there's very, no, no. Very different. And uh, it might be. Who knows? I anyway, think it was in that seventies show as well. I, I would not be surprised. I, yeah, it, it was in school school of rock, or the, 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 that seventies show. Hey, it out. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, yeah. though, guys, that's Zeppelin. it for this retrospective on Led Zeppelin. What do you guys think? What is it the plus? greatest band or is it not? What's your favorite song? Come and let us know, and don't Tell forget us. to subscribe and ring that bell. Dean. More vids come your way, and hey, take care, guys. Bye bye. <laughs>